Top policeman apologizes for the killing of a young Brazilian, but defends the shooting of suspected bombers. Also tonight... It's devastating, absolutely devastating. Bodies, blood everywhere. It was a very bad experience, very bad. Home from horror, British tourists relive the Egyptian holiday carnage. And a class apart, Aussies are just too good for feeble England. Good evening. The government and the police are standing by their shoot-to-kill policy tonight, despite the killing of an innocent man in South London. John Charles de Menezes, who's Brazilian, was shot five times in the head as he tried to board a tube train. The Home Secretary, Charles Clark, today called it a tragic case, but said there had to be a means of dealing with suspected bombers. No comfort at all for the dead man's furious relatives. Harry Smith is at Scotland Yard for us this evening. Harry. Bill, this is the biggest investigation Scotland Yard have ever launched, yet right in the midst of it, they're being forced to defend their tactics. Tactics which have left one man dead, whose only crime appears to be that he was in the wrong place at the wrong time. He came to Britain in search of a better life. He died after being shot in the head by police. John Charles de Menezes, seen here with his family in Brazil, had lived in London for more than three years. He'd recently moved into a flat in this small estate in South London, which today was still under armed police guard. Police had the flat under surveillance after they connected it to Thursday's attempted bombings. After following Mr. De Menez to Stockwell Underground Station, police say they shot him after he ran away when challenged. The dead man's cousin told me he didn't accept the police version of events. I don't think he ran away. I have to see the tapes and the... the after see the tape, I'm, I will see, I will see if they are telling the truth or the liar. I want to see. In Brazil, Mr. Menezes' family was said to be in a state of shock. The country's foreign minister, who's visiting London, had an urgent meeting at the Foreign Office. The Brazilian government and actually the Brazilian public opinion is shocked and perplexed by these events because it's now clear it was a peaceful and innocent person who was killed. I reiterated that, of course, Brazil is totally uh, in solidarity with the UK and with everyone else in the fight against terrorism. But, of course, that uh, uh, we, even in the fight against terrorism, we should also be cautious to avoid the loss of innocent life. The government has promised a full inquiry, but no change in tactics. In this tragic case, uh, a mistake was clearly made, which will be regretted forever. But I don't think that means that they're wrong to have a policy to deal with these appalling circumstances. I wish we didn't have to. I wish we didn't have suicide bombers. But we do, and that we have to find means of combating them. Today, friends of Mr. Menezes lit candles and laid flowers near the spot where he died. They also left messages, some in anger, some in sorrow, many posing questions that may take some time to answer. And in their effort to find some of these answers, Scotland Yard tell us tonight they've arrested a third man in connection with Thursday's attack. They haven't given us any details, but he was arrested in the Tulse Hill area of South London. He's being held at Paddington Green Police Station tonight, along with the other two who were arrested earlier in this investigation. It's thought that none of the three who've been arrested are in any way connected with the four suspect bombers whose pictures were released earlier in the investigation. Harry Smith, thank you. Hundreds of shocked British tourists flew back from Egypt today after being caught up in the worst bombings there for over 20 years. At least 88 people died when three bombs ripped through Sharm El Sheikh. At least two of them are thought to be British. Many of those returning home were in tears as they described their terror. And everybody went to help him because they thought he crashed and then he detonated the bomb. You saw the light and the sky turned orange and then it turned round it's just, the earth was just shaking. The whole window, the patio doors, everything blew right in. Couldn't get the door open. Well, the search for missing tourists in Egypt is continuing with relatives due to arrive this evening. The Foreign Office has not yet confirmed whether any Britons died in the blasts, which killed 88 people. Tonight, more than a thousand Egyptians marched through Sharm El Sheikh to protest at the attacks. From there, our Middle East correspondent Julian Mannion reports. 
Near the bombed out hotel, several hundred Egyptians marched to protest against the bombings. They carried banners condemning the terrorists, as well as the names of the hotels they work in, now threatened by a slump in tourism. We are against what happened here yesterday. All of us, all the Egyptians, and all the foreigners are staying with us and working with us because this is our life. Earlier, heavily armed Egyptian commandos took up guard positions in front of the screened off wreckage. Inside, a top Egyptian official inspected the ruins as the hunt goes on for the men responsible. More than 30 people were arrested overnight, but it's still not clear which terrorist group carried out the slaughter. At the morgue, there was grief as families identified the bodies of their loved ones. Most of the dead were Egyptian, but following the blast, several Britons are listed as missing. At the wrecked tourist market, Egyptians and foreigners were stunned by the damage. The first market bomb went off here and it caused tremendous devastation. The attacks are yet another body blow to the Egyptian tourist industry and the sheer scale of the operation poses some horrific questions. Above all, are tourists now to become routine targets in the war that some Islamic fanatics are waging against the West? Though the beaches are a little less busy than usual, there's been no mass evacuation of British tourists. But some, leaving as scheduled, say they're glad to go. We're terrified, to be perfect. We just want to go home. But others arriving today for holidays they've paid for insist they're not worried. You're determined to have your holiday? Absolutely. Come here for the diving, I'm going to swim with the fishes and nothing's going to stop me. From now on, tourists here will need not only the suntan lotion, but also steady nerves. Julian Mannion, ITV News, in Sharm El Sheikh. Sport now and England's cricketers were given a lesson by Australia.